Hello again everyone. Another day, another CentOS video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to customize what users are allowed to do on your system. I've shown you the sudo command throughout the series so far, which as you know, gives your user the ability to run a command as if he or she was the root user. But how do we actually control who gets access to the sudo command. That's what we're going to explore in this video. Now, in the previous video, I showed you guys group management. I showed you how to check group membership, create, delete groups, and so on. And one of the commands I, of course, have gone over a few times is the groups command, which, as you no doubt already know, will show you which groups your user is a member of. Now here, you can see that my user is a member of the wheel group. Now, by default, the wheel group is the group that a user can be made a member of that will grant him or her access to the sudo command. So, for example, we could do something like this, sudo user mod dash a capital G. And as you know from the previous video, this is the command you can use to assign a group to a user. You give it the group name, in this case wheel, and then the username you would like to be a part of that group. Now I don't need to actually press enter and execute this command because my user is already a member of that group. So if I had a different user, for example, I could just add that user right here, and then that user would be made a member of that group. And then the next time that person logs in, they'll be able to use the sudo command. It's literally that easy. Video over, we're all done. Actually, there's a little bit more to it than that. Now, one thing to note, is that the wheel group right here is the default choice for CentOS for the group that's used as the sudo group. And other distributions will use the wheel group for that purpose as well, but not all distributions will use wheel. For example, Arch Linux, a popular Linux distribution, certainly not one typically used for servers, but it's very popular. It also uses Wheel as the default group for sudo, but then Debian and Ubuntu actually have a group simply named sudo. Now, in my experience, it's always been one or the other. You make your user a member of whatever group is responsible for sudo access by default. And since this series is all about CentOS, that's why we are using Wheel. But with all things in Linux, there's always more to the story than just that. We can actually have a finer control over what users are able to do. We can change the group that's responsible for sudo. We can make some additional changes here that I want to show you guys. We're not going to go too far into the customization here, but there's some important things to learn. Now, pretty much everything in Linux is file-based, and sudo is no exception to that. There's a special file that actually controls access to sudo. I'm going to go ahead and cap that file, etsy, sudoers, and permission is denied. Well, actually, I knew that was going to happen, honest. So I'll go ahead and recall that command and use sudo. I just wanted you to know that that file is protected because it's very, very critical to security that it be protected. I'll put in my password, and now we can view the contents of that file. Now, one thing we should never do is open this file in a text editor and edit it directly. Now, because I am somewhat of a hypocrite, I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. Now I have the Etsy sudoers file open in a text editor. Now right here it says, this file must be edited with the by sudo command. Now it says must, which probably should instead say something like it's encouraged highly to use the by sudo command, which I'll show you in just a moment. But the reason why I wanted to mention this is because if you do edit this file directly, you risk locking yourself out of the system and basically breaking things because this file is literally that important. If you put a typo in here, 
you are actually breaking the ability to use sudo. Now, all things considered, you could certainly go into this file with a text editor. You can force an overwrite of the file. If you do put a valid change in this file, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, there's no typos, your intended changes will work just fine. There's no reason why you should think that changes in this file, if you make any changes, won't be respected. It's just that those changes will be respected for better or worse. So I'm not going to actually save any changes to this file. I don't want us to get into the habit of editing that file directly. So just like it said, we can use the vysudo command to make any changes to that file. We will actually need sudo in order to use that command, which means we first have to have access to sudo or the root account in order to make changes to this file. I'll press enter. And now we have the Etsy sudoers file open in a text editor, but notice down here, it's showing that the file we are editing is not Etsy sudoers, it's Etsy sudoers.tmp. That's an important distinction because this command is staging the changes in somewhat of a temp file, and it's going to do some syntax checking to ensure that you didn't make a mistake. Now, it's hypothetically possible. You probably could find a change to make that's invalid that, you know, it doesn't catch. But what the vysudo command represents is a layer of protection around editing this file. It just gives you a sanity check when you save it. Now, first of all, before we get into that sanity check, you probably noticed straight away that while I do have this open in a text editor, it doesn't have the usual controls down here that you are accustomed to seeing with Nano. And that's because this isn't Nano. Vysudo is using the VI text editor by default. Now, if you are a VI user and you're comfortable with that, there's no problem. You can make your changes right here if you know how to use that editor. But throughout the series so far, we've been using Nano so I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but with that instead. So I'll go ahead and do colon Q because that's how you quit out of the VI text editor. So to use nano, we're going to use a variable. We're going to edit a variable, a shell variable. We're not going to get into variables right now. I'm just going to show you how to do this and don't worry too much about variables just yet. But again, we need sudo because you know that's required. This is a command that's going to change something that's protected. We're going to edit the editor variable. We're going to set it equal to nano, and then we're going to run vysudo. And when I press enter, we are editing the sudoers file. We are using vysudo. You see right here, we're editing a temp file, not the real thing yet, but we have a more familiar text editor. Again, if you know how to use the VI text editor, go ahead and use it. There's no reason not to, but now you know how to use nano if that just happens to be your preference. Now, I refer to this as being somewhat of a sanity checker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type something completely invalid on purpose. Now again, you don't want to do this in production, even with Vysudo, just in case you do manage to bypass the sanity check. But you know, it's all about learning and sometimes you have to break things to learn. So I'm going to type all your base are belong to us. Completely invalid and random. Now what I'm going to do is save this like I would any other file, control O and then enter, and it allowed me to save it. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. But we have a problem here. Syntax error near line nine. It asks, what now? So basically it did catch the problem and it's basically asking us what we want to do about it. What it's not showing us though, is what our options are. It's asking us a question, but it's not really telling us what we can do. It's not giving us some sort of list of options here, but I'm going to give them to you right now. Now you should never do this and don't do this, but you could type Q, which will actually quit and allow the changes to be saved. You definitely don't wanna do that when we find a problem such as this, or any problem at all for that matter. Another option you can do is you can type X, which means exit, but the difference from Q is that it will not save the file. It'll be as if you have done nothing. What you'll probably end up doing most of the time in practice is typing E for edit. 
which basically says, okay, thanks for letting me know there's a problem. Let's go ahead and bring that back up in the text editor. I wanna have a chance to look at it and see what happened or what I might have mistyped. So again, E and I'll press enter. And now the file is back on our screen. So here I will actually put a pound symbol or hash symbol right in front of it. And that's essentially a comment. I'll put another one here so it matches the indentation level and character level, matches the other lines here. Comments are ignored and that's exactly what that does. Putting a hash or pound symbol there means that that line will be ignored. And then I can try saving the file again. Control O and then enter and then control X, and it allowed us to exit the text editor, which basically means it didn't find anything wrong with what we were doing. Okay, so I showed you how to edit the sudoers file, but one thing I didn't explain is why would you want to? Let's go ahead and bring it back. And let's just take a look at some of the verbiage that we can find in this file to get a greater idea of why we might want to edit this. So everything here, you know, these are all comments, so nothing useful quite yet. I mean, there's some documentation we can read there, but let's scroll down and see what's not commented out. Now we see some options here that are not commented out, but those options are beyond the scope of this video but we're starting to get to some settings we can actually change. Now, if I scroll down a little bit further here, we can actually see some things that are not commented out and are within scope of this video. Now, first of all, root is allowed to do everything. As you can see right here, that's by default. So if root was to use the sudo command, well, root would be able to do that. Now, one thing you can automatically glean from this is that we have a user, right here, and then we have something here that seems to have something to do with what that user is allowed to do. Now, similarly, we have this line right here, which is where we see where it is set that the wheel group is allowed to do everything because it has a percent symbol in front of it, which is basically how you tell the difference in this file between a user permission or a group permission. And it even tells you right here allows people in group wheel to run all commands. So automatically you know that anybody in this group can run all commands with sudo, but you already knew that, we've already gone over it. Now, one valid change that you could put here is we could add another group. So I could do admins and then type the same thing again that we see in the line above. And I can go ahead and save this file and exit. It accepted the change. So now we have two groups that we can use for sudo access. The group admins does not exist, but if we make it exist, then members of that group would be allowed to actually use the sudo command and run all commands. And here we are back at the file on that line. Now, it's all well and good that admins are able to do everything, but sometimes you want to be a little bit more restrictive than that. Maybe you don't want a certain group to do everything. Maybe you might want them to do one thing in particular. Now to understand how to allow a group or a user to run just specific commands, we need to get this out of the way. We need to understand or at least have a general understanding what this section actually means and how it pertains to what users are able to do. We have three alls in this case. Now a few of these are beyond the scope of this video, but I'll just give you a general description. The first all right here means that the user can execute from all terminals. The second all means that a member of this group admins can impersonate all other users. Now this is actually kind of important to keep in mind. We'll come back to it. Now the third all, or I should say the third section here, refers to what commands the user or group is allowed to do. So I can actually change this to a command, which I'll do right now. Now the ls command is a very safe example, but we wanna do this a little bit differently. I'm going to open a new terminal. We want to know what the full path is to a command before we enter it here. So for the ls command, I mean, we already know that command, but if you do which in front of it, it will give you the full path to that command, and that's what you want to use. Now without getting 
too far into detail here. Depending on the shell environment, certain directories may or may not be understood as having binary commands in them. Basically, when you run commands on the Linux terminal, there are certain directories that are automatically searched for commands, which is why you are able to run ls. You don't have to type the entire thing out because it's already looking in user bin anyway. We don't know how the commands are going to be run, so we want to be on the safe side and include the full path here. Go ahead and close this, and let's put the entire path here. User slash bin slash ls, just like that. And actually, we don't need any of the other options here. We can just simply do that right there to limit the admins group to using just that command, but they're also not allowed to impersonate other users. Now, it's important to keep that in mind because as you get more into Linux, you need to start thinking more about security. And if you allow your users to impersonate other users, they could potentially do something bad on the system, but do it under a different person's account, which basically means that if something breaks, you could be blaming the wrong person. Now, obviously the ls command, I mean, what's the worst that someone can do with that command? I mean, it just lists the storage. So basically this right here is pretty useless. We're just allowing the ls command. But then again, maybe we do want a user to be able to list storage in places they don't normally have access to. But we can see a more practical example because that certainly wasn't practical. If we scroll down, we have this right here. This is an example, which is allowing members in the users group to shut down the system. This may or may not be something that you want, or maybe you want to give someone access to install packages, but maybe you don't want them to shut down the server, but you don't mind them installing packages there's all kinds of examples. There might be some things that you do want certain users to do and some things that you really don't want them to do. So you could just restrict them to the things that you do want them to do. Now, I'm going to leave this all up to your imagination, but the most important thing to know here is that you can be selective over what you allow your users to do with sudo, even though it defaults to allowing people that can sudo to be able to run everything. When it comes to security, that's really not what you want. Now I did add a legitimate change here. I added this line right here as you know, lame as that example might be. I'm gonna go ahead and save it and then exit out. So no errors, we should be good to go. So sudo actually gets more complex than this. But for right now, at this point, that's really all you need to know to have a basic understanding of what allows sudo to do what it does. So go ahead and practice that. See if you can create a group and then give that group permission to do a specific thing. And I'll see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. Thanks for watching.